see what's going on here. We've got x plus 1 in our numerator, or in, not our numerator, in our exponent. We have a negative in front, and then we've got minus 4 on the end. Um, so, this one's a little bit different than the ones that we've done so far because this x is positive. It's not negative. So when your x is positive and you're adding or subtracting a number from it, it actually moves the opposite way that we would from what we would expect it to do. So the x plus 1 here actually moves it um, left one unit. Okay, this moves us left one unit. Okay, when the x is not negative, it's the opposite of what we would expect it to be. Usually we think adding, right, up, okay, um, but in this case, because x is positive, then we're moving it left one unit. So we're taking uh, one half to the x, I think we've got that graph somewhere on our paper, so we're taking that and shifting everything left one unit. So we are about right here, uh, one half, nope, that's backwards, that's backwards. Um. Here we go. Okay, so that is one half to the x shifted left one unit. One half to the x shifted left one unit. Okay, so that that takes care of our exponent. Then we got to worry about that negative in front. Okay, negative one in front. What did we say that did? What did it just do in the last example? It makes all your y values opposite, so it reflects over... Come on, guys. The answer is right up here. Negative 1 in front reflects over what? The x-axis. So it's going to take all those values and it's going to flip them over the x-axis. So now we're at negative 3, negative 4, negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, negative 1 half, 1, negative 1 fourth. The last thing happening with this function is the minus 4 on the end. That moves us down four. So we take all those points and move them down four units. Um, is this looking a little familiar? Does this not look almost exactly the same as the one we just graphed? These not the same points? Negative 3, negative 8, negative 2, negative 6, negative 1, negative 5. These are the exact same points that we just got there. Look at how these are related to each other. They both have minus 4 on the end. They both have a negative in front. They both have a 1 in the exponent. One of them is subtracting, one of them is adding, but one of them is negative x, one of them is positive x. And then look at their bases. How are their bases related? 2 and 1 half, how are they related to each other? What do we call this? Reciprocals. Okay? We call them reciprocals. Think back to when we started looking at these graphs. Um, you came up with the conclusion, and I'll figure this out, that if the base was greater than 1, your function was increasing, right? And if it was less than 1, it was decreasing. So if you have 2 and 1 half, those are going to be mirror images 
of each other. Okay. Um, so that I mean that, that's what we're looking at here. They're actually the same function. They look different, similar, but definitely different with the uh, different bases. But they are actually the same uh, function when they're graphed. But uh, compounding continuously, does anybody know, anybody heard of that one? Probably did it in Math 2, compounding continuously. The formula is A equals P E to the RT. Does that look familiar at all? Hurt. Okay. Whenever the problem says compounded continuously, it doesn't say compounded monthly or quarterly or anything like that. It says compounded continuously. This is your formula. Okay, and the variables mean the same thing. A is the amount after a certain amount of time. After T years. <clears throat> P is your initial investment. E is a number on your calculator. Okay, I know it looks like a variable, but it is actually a number. It is approximately 2.71. Okay, it has to do, it has lots of applications in the real world. Um, but you just use the button on your calculator. R is your rate as a decimal, as it was before. And T is the number of years just like before okay so this is actually a simpler formula right you don't have all that one plus r over n and everything um, it's a simpler formula to use I do not want you to type in 2.71 as e I want you to use the e button on your calculator so say for example um, we have a thousand dollar investment it's compounded continuously. Your E is you press second, and it's the button labeled LN beside the floor button. Okay, we have E to the X. It's not actually going to go to the X. You put in what goes in the exponent. Uh, let's say it's a rate. We did 7% the other day. We'll stick with 7%. Five years. Okay, times five. Close your parentheses. That's how much money you will have at the end of five years. 7% interest. It's compounding like just over and over and over and over and over. It's as frequently as possible. It's compounding. Okay. Um, so you need that formula for number two there. Okay. So I want you to do problem on the front. Uh, the problems on the back. You have graphs for those. Work through the transformations like we did the examples. Okay. Yes, you may use.